Whoa, what is going on, football fans? Back at it with another football video. Uh, not a New York Giants video today. We're going to do a power rankings video. I asked you guys, like, I think like a week ago, whether or not you'd guys be interested in content like this. And I brought up the suggestion of doing the top 10 teams. You guys actually told me to do all 32 teams. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do an all 32 team power ranking. I'll briefly go over each team and wh where I have them rank and why I have them ranked there. And we're going to start from 32. We're going to work it all the way up to one. And we'll see where, in fact, I have the New York Giants. And if you guys like this, I'll do it each and every week. Um, it's just for fun, just to give an overall outlook of the league and see, you know, where at least I feel the teams are as of now uh, for the most part. Obviously, you may disagree with me if you're a team, a, a fan of one of these teams. Don't hate me. Uh, <laughs> but this is just my opinion as of now, and maybe things will change. I couldn't find an empty, an empty template for 32 teams, so I just got one of these tier lists. The way it's going to work is left to right is going to be the lower ranked team. So, for instance, the 32nd ranked team I'm going to put in the D column. Then I'm going to work it to the right from there, 31, 30, 29, 28, until I get to the C column, the B column, the A column, and the S column. But that's you know, that's just how I'm going to rank it. D, you could call dumpster fire. S, you, I guess you could call Super Bowl contender. But that's the way that we're going to do it. Um, the teams that I'm going to put in the D category are probably just going to be teams that I feel have no chance to make the playoffs at all. And at this point are thinking draft. So maybe D for draft. Uh, C, you know, teams that maybe have a slight chance to go on a run and, and sneak into the playoffs. B, probably teams that are like legitimate playoff contenders and, you know, probably stand at least a 60 to 50 to 60 percent chance to make the playoffs. A, very good teams. Um, not quite Super Bowl contenders, and then S would be the Super Bowl contenders. At least that's the way we feel right now. But this is more of a power ranking, so you may not agree in terms of the the the, the phrasing of where I put them, but just think about it, the order. That's, that's how I'm going to rattle it off. We're going to start with the worst team in the NFL on my list. Maybe it surprised a couple of you guys a little bit. I think they're horrible. Um, it's just a matter of preference at this point. I'm going with the Carolina Panthers. I have the Carolina Panthers at number 32. And I understand they don't have the worst record in the league. They're 2-5. and five. I understand that they're coming up a really good win against the Bucs last week, even though when you watch the Bucs and see what they've been doing this year, I don't know how good of a win it is. They've been horrible, but they beat them 21-3 with P.J. Walker at quarterback. Um, they did beat the Saints. And then, of course, they have five losses to the Cardinals, Rams, Niners, Browns, and Giants. But, I mean, you're talking about a team that just fired Matt Rule. They they don't know what the hell they're doing with their quarterback position. They've been so disappointing. And at this point, it's just a matter of preference of where you want to put them. You want to have them 29 if you're a Panthers fan, so be it. To me, they've been ultra disappointing. Um, so that's why I'm as low as I do at number 32 overall. Number 31, in my opinion, probably the worst team. So most people would probably have them 30, 32. I'm going to have the Houston Texans who I think at the beginning of the year, I just got to find them down here. I think at the beginning of the year, most people at Houston is their worst team, and I probably should have them 32. I should probably have the Panthers 31, but whatever. Um, Houston did have an impressive tie to start out the year against the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, they are 1-4-1. One, and one. They also won in Jacksonville. They got a really good young running back in Damian Pierce, and that's about all I could say about them. Uh, they're a team that's clearly going to be in the market for a quarterback next year. Um so, yeah, they're tanking. I mean, that's the that, at least that was the mindset that, that I had going into the year. Maybe not tanking, but they're just really bad. But they are a team that competes uh, for the most part week in and week out. So they're fighting. They're just not very good. Number 30, you're, you want to talk about a team that's really fallen off. After four weeks, you heard a lot of people saying, wow, Detroit's got a really good offense and because um, they were actually first in overall offense, both in points for and yards for through four weeks, and they were dead last in both defensive categories. Well, the defense hasn't gotten much better, but the offense over the last two weeks has gotten a lot worse. Detroit has scored a combined six points over the last two weeks combined, and all of a sudden that number one ranked offense has dropped to nine. And like I said, the defense hasn't gotten much better. They have the worst record in the league at one and five. Um, they've given up at least 24 points or more in each in every game they've played this year in their six contests. So even though I do like the way they're building that football team, I do like the way that they're building out the offensive line. I do think that Aiden Hutchins is going to be a really good player. Penny Sewell is going to be a really good player. Much like I said about Houston, I think it's the same thing for Detroit. They're not fooling anybody. Jared Goff is not the quarterback of the future there. They're thinking draft, C.J. Stroud, whoever. They're going to have a new signal caller next year uh, for sure. I don't see. I think they'll have a top five pick, and I think they'll continue to struggle throughout the season because their defense is just pitiful, and their offense is really starting to fail them. 
Next up, the team with the worst point differential in the NFL. And I can't believe I haven't ranked this low. And maybe they'll switch it because I still think they have talent on defense. I still think they have a great head coach in Mike Tomlin. But obviously a transition year. You got Kenny Pickett now with the quarterback. Trubisky wasn't helping him out. Pickett's not very good right now. He's a rookie, still learning. Was never really in love with Pickett. But if anybody could get something out of him, it is the Steelers. They have talented wide receivers. They have some talent on defense. So maybe they turn it around. The Steelers always seem to find a way to finish 500. So nothing would shock me with them. But, I mean, they just have not been impressive, guys. I mean, they're 2-5 and five in the North. They are they easily could be 1-6, and six, right? I mean, they played the Bengals week one. They created five turnovers and had to go to overtime to win that contest. I think they uh, may have missed a uh, field goal. Or the Bengals, I think, actually missed a field goal to win it from like 30 yards at the end of the game. And then they missed another field goal in overtime. So the Steelers probably should be. One and six, even though they were able to create five turnovers in that game, they probably should have lost. Um, they lost to the Bills, Panthers, Jets, Browns, Dolphins. Um, obviously, their signature win is that win against the Cincinnati Bengals week number one. So not a very good team right now. And like I said, in a transition year with Kenny Pickett at the quarterback position. Number 28. We're going to go with the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland's been struggling, and I know that they got Deshaun Watson in their back pocket. And things may change once he gets back. Right now, Jacoby Brissett is manning the fort. They're 2-5. and five. And, I mean, they got a good offensive line. That maintains. They got a really good running attack with Nick Chubb. They have some nice pieces on defense. But until such time that Watson gets back, and even when he does, you don't know how good he's going to play in that offense. Hasn't played with those guys yet, right? So it may take some time. Um, much like I said about the Steelers, I think it's kind of a transition year for the Browns, but they're a team that could immediate be, immediately become a contender next year uh, with the addition of Deshaun Watson to that football team with their offensive line. But the fact they're off to a 2-5 and five start, I don't expect them to do much damage uh, from within the AFC Conference and to make the playoffs this year. They could be a team I see gets hot at the end of the year, wins four, four out of their last five, shows some hope going into next year. But to me, they're clearly not a playoff team, uh, which is why I have them in that D tier, and it's why I have them as of now. Uh, number 28 in my power rankings. Next up, their record to me doesn't match uh, the talent on the team. Uh, I just don't think they're good. And I know they just had a blowout performance on, um, I think it was Monday Night Football, where they put up, I think it was 31 points. Um, and Justin Fields actually looked pretty good. But I don't think they're good. I, I, I really don't. I think the Chicago Bears are a mess. And I'm having trouble finding their avatar. Where are the Chicago Bears, guys? Uh, there it is. The Chicago Bears, I'm going to have, at 27, they're 3-4 and four on the year. Um, again, just not a very good football team. The Giants played them. We beat them eh, pretty easily. We were able to run the, the run the football on them. Saquon Barkley probably had his best game of the year, either that or against the Tennessee Titans. Um, and, yeah, much like I said about the Carolina Panthers, the Houston Texans, the Detroit Lions, potentially a team that could be looking at a quarterback. Maybe not. Fields it looks like he's starting to improve and look pretty good on prime time. So maybe he'll start to turn it around. I did like the way that the Bears started to use him, starting to use his legs a bit more. A lot of people were complaining about that, that they were trying to make him a pocket passer. Um, but I still think they're a team that's going to struggle. Their offensive line is still horrible. Uh, they still don't have any weapons to help out Justin Fields. I know they've found a way to win a couple of football games, but again, just don't think they're very good. It's why they got him at 27. Next up, the New Orleans Saints. The Saints are 2-5. and five. Wasn't in love with the Saints coming into the year. I will say, and maybe I should have them at C because they actually do have a chance to make the playoffs um, just because of how bad their division is. So they definitely still have a chance to make the playoffs, um, even at 2-5. and five. They have played a tough schedule. I mean, you listen to their schedule. They played at Atlanta. They played the Bucks, They played at Carolina. Then they played the Vikings, the Seahawks, the Bengals, and at Arizona the last four weeks. And a lot of their games have been close and they've actually put up a good amount of points. They have the third ranked offense in terms of points scored in the NFL right now. They got a really good young, talented rookie in Chris Alave. Uh, their defense, not so much. They've given up the second most points in all of football. Uh, do have a couple of good wins at Atlanta. Who's looked better than I thought they would this year. They beat them week one by one point and they beat the uh, Seattle Seahawks who have been a surprise team this year. They beat them by seven points while they were at home, had a narrow loss to the Bengals, played them tough at home, 30 to 26. So they've been a competitive football team. So much like I said about the Browns, could see the Saints maybe turn it up a bit in the second half, but still to me, just not a very good football team. Dalton, I mean, come on. Dalton's not going to get the job done over there. Next up at 25, maybe a bit of a surprise to some people. We're not accustomed uh, to seeing them this this low, but to me, they look like a mess. I mean, they just got blown out against the Chicago Bears. 
Uh, the AFC East is a really tough division right now. The Dolphins, the Jets, the Bills. I think it's clear that, that New England's the worst team in that division. And it seems like right now they have a quarterback controversy, right, with Bailey Zappi, the way that he's played, um, you know, between him and Mac Jones. I was never a huge fan of Mac Jones. I know he had a fairly successful rookie year. And then he got exposed in the playoffs last year. But, yeah, I, I just think New England – He's kind of in a transition phase as well. Um, probably not making the playoffs. I'd be very surprised if they make the playoffs. But if anybody could turn that team around, it's Bill Belichick. But right now, it's hard to have them much higher than where I do. Next up, the Jacksonville Jaguars. They come in at 2-5. and five. Uh, Have them at 24. Not making the playoffs. I do think it's a team, like I said this past week when they played the Giants, with a lot of talent. I do think it's a team on the uh, on the upswing, unlike a lot of these teams that I've mentioned thus far. I do think they're trending down the right path. Trevor Lawrence, to me, has a lot of potential at the quarterback position, and I like a lot of the young pieces they have on their offense. Travis Etienne looked fantastic last week. Um, Christian Kirk is a very good wide receiver, and they've got really good defensive, you know, young defensive players. Obviously, with Trayvon Walker, the first overall pick, Josh Allen, very good edge rusher. They got, you know, obviously uh, Lloyd, a very good young linebacker. So they, they have good young pieces. I do like what they're building there. I just don't think they're quite there yet. They don't know how to win quite yet. But Doug Peterson, at least in my opinion, certainly has that team going in the right direction. Next up, going to keep it in the D, D tier. We're almost out of it. To me, the most disappointing team thus far in the NFL. I think they're two and five. The Denver Broncos. I, I I could even have them lower than this, if I'm being honest. I have them at 23. Could easily have been like 25, 26. They've been so disappointing. Coming off a loss this past week to the Jets. But they just haven't looked good. Russell Wilson looks like, at least as of now, is an epic failure. And I'm not going to doubt Russ. Maybe he, I, I have no doubt he's going to look better at some point. But he does not look near the quarterback he once did with the Seattle Seahawks. And it looks to me uh, that Denver is probably regretting that decision. They've just been so disappointing. Um, I thought they'd be a playoff team coming into the year. I really did. They have a lot of good young talent in terms of their weapons. A lot of people thought they'd have a good defense and Russell Wilson would be the finishing touch that would make them not just a playoff threat, but, to, but potentially a Super Bowl threat. Um, and they just are nowhere near that. Uh, super disappointing. They got a Big problem with their head coach. You got to figure they're going to get rid of him before the end of the year or maybe at year's end. Um, we'll see about that. But it sounds like a lot of people think he'll be out of there after just one year. Um, so there's a lot of problems over there. Next up, we got the Washington Commanders. This may be the last D team. We'll see. I got them at 22. They've now won two straight. Uh, I think they beat the Bears two weeks ago narrowly. Didn't look great doing it. But they had a pretty good win this past week. So they're three and four. And they are one of, if not the best, probably one of the best last place teams in football. And the NFC East is just ridiculous. Um, it really is when you see the top of this list. But they're the worst team in the division. And even they are not that bad of a team. Taylor Heineke got the win this past week. Um, we'll see. We'll see what they can develop into. You talk to a lot of Washington fans. They've been really disappointed with the offensive line this year. They do have a lot of good young weapons. Dotson's been a really good young wide receiver. Samuel. I don't watch every Washington game. It's looked decent from time to time when I've tuned in and watched them. Um, and obviously, they still have Terry McLaurin. So, they have some pieces there. They have some dynamic playmakers. Um, Robinson, the young running back. But they still got a ways to go. I think Rivera is probably on his way out at year's end. Unless this team really turns it around, we'll have to wait and see. But it's going to be tough uh, being that the Dallas Cowboys are 5-2, the Giants are 6-1, and one, and the Philadelphia Eagles are 6-0. and oh. So, Washington is probably looking at a last place finish this year and probably looking at near a top 10 pick in this year's draft. Next up, we've got the Atlanta Falcons. You know what? I'll put the Falcons in the seat here. I'll give the Falcons some props. They've surprised me this year. I thought they were going to be a complete disaster at the beginning of the year. They've looked better than I thought they would. I still don't think they're good. But their offense, I think, is ranked. They have a high-ranked offense when I saw the stats. I can't remember, but they've been able to put up points with Mariota. Um, they got, obviously, a lot of good young weapons there as well. And, yeah, they've had some relatively impressive wins. So, I'll put them in the seat here, but they're at the very back end of the seat here. By no means do I think they'll be a playoff team. But for now, I have them 21 in my power rankings. Number 20, you want to talk about a coach that's going to get fired. Cliff Kingsbury could very well be on his way out. But who knows, in that NFC West, there's certainly a team that could make the playoffs because nobody's running away with it. Right now, Seattle is 4-3, and three, Arizona's 3-4. and four. So they're only a game out of first place. But 
I just don't think they're a very good football team. Kyler Murray struggling this year. Doesn't look like the quarterback he once was. A lot of people are blaming that on the head coach. They're blaming it on the play calling. Very well may be the case, but regardless, I don't think Arizona is that good. And I think the fact they play in the West, it's only going to make it harder. I know the West thus far has been disappointing, but you got to figure at some point the Rams and 49ers start to turn it around, and the Seahawks may be a lot better than a lot of people once thought. Next up, the Green Bay Packers. Who the hell would have thought at the beginning of the year through seven weeks I'd have the Green Bay Packers at 19 in my power rankings, but it's hard to have them much higher. Aaron Rodgers doesn't look near the player he once was. Right now, the Green Bay Packers have the 23rd-ranked offense in football. The Green Bay Packers have dropped three straight to the Giants, the Jets, and now the Washington Commanders three straight weeks. Rodgers does not look like old Rodgers. Rodgers, unfortunately, looks like a guy that may be falling off a cliff. Now, he lost Devontae Adams, and I'm sure that has something to do with it, and it really goes to show how important weapons are. But the Packers may not make the playoffs this year. As a matter of fact, there's a very good chance they won't. I could see maybe Minnesota falling back to the pack a little bit. There's still only two games behind them, uh, even though Minnesota beat them in the head-to-head, but they still play each other another time. So if Rodgers figures this out, I wouldn't completely rule them out in terms of being able to catch up in the NFC North. But right now they're struggling, and they're struggling in a big, big way. Next up, the Raiders. Raiders are 2-4, and four, but when you look at their schedule, they've played a really tough schedule thus far. Um, I think they, I mean, I think they've played the Chiefs. I can't remember, but they played a really tough schedule, and I still think they're good. They have one of the best-ranked offenses in football. I think they're third in points or third in yards. Um, obviously, you have a lot of, you know, firepower, right? They have one of the better tight ends. Obviously, with the addition of Devontae Adams, Carr's a good quarterback. So they got talent, um, and you have to figure they're, they're probably going to improve off of this. Um, you could certainly argue in terms of talent. They're probably a top 10 or 11 team in the league. The record just doesn't say so. And we'll see how the Raiders do throughout the rest of the years. Hopefully for them, that schedule may ease up just a bit. I do think they've played a pretty ch- uh, tough schedule. I uh, looked at it cl- quickly before I did this video. Next up, the Indianapolis Colts at 3-3-1. Three, three, and one. They've been a disappointing team for me. They really have. I almost had them lower in my power rankings. They've been a really disappointing team to me. Um, Jonathan Taylor doesn't look like the same player, at least as of now. But you still got to respect that offensive line. Uh, I still think they have a good head coach there in Reich. But when you look at their schedule, they tied against Houston week one. Whatever, it's week one. You come out slow out of the gate. But then they got blown out. And I know they never play well in Jacksonville, but they got shut out 24-0. They narrowly then lost to the Chiefs. Uh, I mean, beat the Chiefs, rather which is an impressive win, which is why I had to have them at least at 17. Beating the Chiefs, um, even though it was at home, is still a really impressive win. They beat them 20-17. to Then they lost to the Titans by a touchdown. They had to go to overtime to beat Denver. Then they got their revenge against Jacksonville 34-27. And this past week, they lost to Tennessee 19-10. So the Colts are kind of a tough team for me to figure out right now. I still think they're a threat to make the playoffs in the South. But I don't know. It seems like they got a lot of holes on that team right now. Next up. Another one of the most disappointing teams in the league. That's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tampa Bay is 3-4. and four. They just lost to P.J. Walker 21-3. to three. And much like I said, as far as Aaron Rodgers goes, it's similar with Brady. Doesn't look the same. They've only scored over 20 points twice all year. Uh, their key win on the year is at Dallas, but that was week one. Um, and Dallas looks like a different team right now. Dak, I think, got hurt in that game. So, you know, they had the transition with Rush, I think. I could be wrong. But they blew him out in that game. I think it was like 19-3. to three. They beat the Falcons. They started off 2-0, and and since then, they have struggled mightily. Uh, they have losses to the Chiefs, the Packers, the Steelers, and the Panthers. So, not a big fan of the Bucs right now, but still got to respect Brady. So, that's why I have them right around the middle of the pack. Next up, another very disappointing team, and that's the San Francisco 49ers. They are 3-4 and four right now. It seems like they went all in with the trade for Christian McCaffrey, and you got to think as he gets acclimated to that offense – with the pre-snap motion, he would be seemingly be a great fit for that Kyle Shanahan offense, and they got weapons all over. So I still think this 49ers team, who was actually my Super Bowl pick before the start of the year, um, to go to the to go to it. I had the Bills winning it, but I had the 49ers going to it out of the NFC, is still going to turn it around. I mean, Ayuk, uh, Debo Samuel, Kittle, McCaffrey, the the offensive play caller in Shanahan. I just feel like there's too much talent there. And, and they have a lot of talent on the defensive side as well, obviously, you know, led by Bosa. So I still think they're going to turn it around. I still think they're a top 10 team on paper. But right now at three and four, coming off a really bad loss, it's hard to have them much higher than this. 
Next up, we're going to go with the Miami Dolphins at four and three. They actually started three and oh. Tua went down with the injury. Then they brought him back too soon, got hurt again, came back this past week, looked really sluggish, but maybe it's him getting back, you know, back into it. We'll see. I don't know. I have, I've not fully bought into Miami yet, but McDaniels is smart head coach, good offensive mind. They have the best wide receiving core in football with Tyree Kill and Waddle. So we'll see if Tua can get back that magic. I will say Tua's stats are a bit, bit misleading. I think he's got eight touchdowns, maybe nine touchdowns on the year, but six came in one game. Uh, where he had that incredible comeback, where they, I, I, who did they play again? I think they they beat, um, uh, we played them. Uh, I forgot what, who it was off the top of my head, but we, uh, Baltimore it was, right? They scored 28 points in the fourth quarter, and he threw six touchdowns in that game. But outside of that, he hasn't been super electric this year. We'll see. I'm still not fully bought into Miami, but I think they have some talent. I think they could be, could be a playoff team. We'll see. Now we're going to get to the B teams, I think, right? Yep. We're going to get to the B teams. This is where I see a little bit of an uptick in terms of the tier. We're going to go with our opponent this week. That's the Seattle Seahawks. And they, to me, have been one of the biggest surprises in the NFL this year, along with the New York Giants. Um, Seattle's 4-3. and three. They currently lead the NFC West. Geno Smith has, I think, the highest complete, completion percentage in all of football, and he looks like a good quarterback. They got a great young running back over there as well. They got tons of weapons in the passing game. And Seattle surprised a lot of people. They've had some impressive wins along the way. So I got them at 13. I think the Giants are playing a pretty good team this week on the road. That will be a challenge. We'll see how the New York Giants stack up. Next up, the defending Super Bowl chance, champs, the Rams. And the Rams came out really sluggish this year. Um, they got blown out week one against Buffalo. And they still don't look near the team they once did. You still got to respect the being that they're the former Super Bowl champs, being that McVay is still their head coach. Um, so they, they probably at some point are going to figure this out and they'll probably make the playoffs, whether or not they win the division. I think it ultimately will come down to them in the 49ers. We'll see. Maybe Seattle has something to say about that, but that's why I don't have them higher than that. They've been really disappointing. One of the more disappointing teams in the league uh, factoring in, in that they're coming up that Super Bowl. And right now, and I know he had an injury in the off season, Matt Stafford does not look near the quarterback that he was last year. Next up, LA chargers four and three. Justin Herbert, again, coming off a pretty bad loss this past week. Um, I forgot what it was. I'm going to pull it up right now. But they 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 lost a really bad game this past week. Um, I, I remember seeing it during the schedule. They lost to – who did they lose to? They lost – well, no, not a really bad loss, but the, the way in which they lost. They got blown out at home against Seattle, 37-23. They lost by 14 points. Um, Herbert had the injury earlier in the year, and – I don't know. They, I mean, they are four and three, but when you look at their wins, they beat Las Vegas. So I do think that's why I had them higher than a lot of other teams who had better records um, in my power rankings. I still think the Raiders are a pretty good team. They lost at Kansas City only by three. Then they got blown out against Jacksonville. That was the game, though, if we're being fair, that Herbert was coming off the injury. Then they beat Houston by 10. Not a very good team. At Cleveland, not a very good team. Beat them by two. Had to go to overtime against Denver. So it just seems like the even with the wins that they've been piling up, before this really bad loss to Seattle, they just weren't clicking. They just didn't look like they were the team that a lot of people thought they would be going into the year. That may change. We'll see, you know, as the season progresses. I still think Herbert's a damn good quarterback, and I still think the Chargers are very dangerous. But right now, I got him just outside of my top 10. Next up, the Tennessee Titans. Coming in at number 10, the Titans started off 0-2, including a loss to our New York Giants. Since then, the Titans have won four straight. Um, and they're not the prettiest of teams, but they never are. They just always seem to be the type of team that finds ways to win football games. Um, they're a grinded out football team. A lot of people have compared our team, the, the current New York Giants team, to the Tennessee Titans, and it kind of makes sense. There are four wins. They beat the Colts twice during that span. They also beat the Raiders, and they won at Washington by four. Uh, they're week two. They got blown out against Buffalo, but it's Buffalo. Um, Henry's starting to get it going. He's had over 100 yards on the ground each of the last three weeks. They're getting back to their identity. They got Houston on deck this week, so you figure they stand a very good chance to get the 5-2, and two, and we'll see where the Titans go from there. But right now, yeah, I got them in my top 10. Next up, number 9, the surprise team along with the, the New York Giants this year is the New York Jets. I'm not ready to say that they're definitely a playoff team, which is my A tier, um, but I can't have them much Lower than this, they're five and two, and I'm gonna pull up their schedule real quick. But they're five and two. Their defense has looked really good. 
Um, obviously, Wilson is still growing, but they have a lot of good young young talent on that team. Of course, Brees Hall went down, which was horrible news uh, for Jets fans. I think they also lost Vera Tucker, the young guard on that football team as well. So that had to hurt Jet fans too. But I definitely think you got a team with Robert Sala that has that team trending in the right direction. They won four straight, guys. I mean, they beat Denver last week by a touchdown. They won Acre Bay by 17. They beat Miami by 23. Granted, played a backup quarterback, but still, they beat they beat Pittsburgh 24-20. So the Jets are playing very good football. Um, and I don't think many people saw this record coming. They got a huge game coming up this week against New England before they play Buffalo, and then they go to Foxborough after that. So now you're going to really start to see, as the division games come up for the Jets, what they truly are. But right now, it's hard not to have them in your top 10 off to a really good start. So congratulations, New York Jets fans, with your 5-2 and two football team. Got you guys at ninth, ninth in my power rankings. Next up, number eight, the defending AFC champions. And I'm going to put them in as a def uh, definitive playoff team. And a lot of people may say, no way. No way. They're four and three. But look at the Cincinnati Bengals. All of a sudden, they seem to be starting to get things into gear, right? They start off really bad with the with the aforementioned game against the Steelers in which Burrow threw, I think it was five interceptions. I know they had five turnovers, and they still almost found a way to win that game. Then they lost to Dallas, which at the time was a little bit of a surprise to a lot of people, especially being that Cooper Rush was in that game. But Dallas has turned out to be a much better team than a lot of people thought, and they only lost by three. Then they destroyed the Jets, who are 5-2 and two right now, 27-12. They beat Miami 27-15, a narrow loss at Baltimore 19-17, and now they got two wins straight against at New Orleans and Atlanta. And you look at their next three games, they're probably going to keep, keep going. They got at Cleveland, they got Carolina, and they got at the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I think Cincinnati's starting to trend up. Um, and I definitely think they're a team that could do some damage from within this year's playoffs. Obviously, with the playoff pedigree, you saw what they were able to do, able to do last year as a wild card. So they're a threat for sure. And I definitely think they're going to be a team that makes the playoffs. Um, and them in Baltimore will probably duke it out for the AFC North crown, which is going to bring me to seven. And we're going to stay in the AFC North. The Baltimore Ravens also coming in at four and three and probably the Giants best win thus far this year. Um, you can't really deny Baltimore is a good football team. Coming into that game against the New York Giants, Baltimore easily could have been undefeated. Um, they beat the Jets week one in New York, in New Jersey, I should say, which now looks like a pretty impressive win. They beat them 24-9. to They lost to Miami, but if you recall, they gave up 28 points in the fourth quarter. They kind of choked away that game. We're in complete control of that game through the first three quarters, and I do think they're a better team than Miami. They won at Foxborough by 11. They then only they lost to the Bills by only three points. Then they beat the Bengals, who were a good football team at home, 19-17, before falling to the New York Giants, 24-20, uh, then beating Cleveland this past week. Now they got at the Bucks and at New Orleans. So two pretty good tests. So I think we'll really get to see what Baltimore's made of uh, these next two weeks going up against those teams. But I still think they're a damn good football team. If I had to pick right now, I'd probably actually have the Bengals being the best team in the AFC North, but I'm going to have the Ravens above them for now due to the fact that the Ravens beat them head-to-head, -head, even though it may have been at home. But they got the same record. Baltimore beat them head-to-head. -head. So I think you got to give Baltimore the nod slightly right now. Next up at number six, the New York. No, not quite yet. We're going with the Minnesota Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings right now are my – um, number six team. I almost had the Giants here, but when I looked at the Vikings schedule, they're not really impressive. I they're and they're I think they rank like their their rankings in terms of overall offense and defense isn't th off the charts. Their defense isn't spectacular, um, and they don't really have any super impressive wins. I mean, when they beat the Packers week one, much like when we beat the Packers, we thought it was a pretty impressive win. But the Packers did not look good. Um, that was week one. We'll see if you know. We'll see how Aaron Rodgers grows over the course of the year but right now that win doesn't look as impressive as it did when they when they won it at first the only really good team they played was at philadelphia who's obviously very good they lost 24 7 then they played detroit they won by four they played new orleans at home they won by three they beat the bears at home only by seven and they beat miami uh with a banged up two i believe 24 to 16 so i have to have them ranked high they're five and one they're coming up the bye now they're playing arizona this week and they probably stayed a good chance to get the 6-1. and one. Then they play Washington. Then they play at Buffalo. Then they play the Cowboys. So they got a couple of tough games coming up. But, yeah, I actually have them slightly below the New York Giants as of now. Their team doesn't, like, 
overly impress me. I don't look at them as like this incredible football team. They definitely have a lot of good weapons on the offensive side of the football that Kirk Cousins has to throw to. But I actually think the Giants have played a more challenging schedule. And right now the Giants have the better record at 6-1. and one. So I'm going to have the Giants at number 5. Um, and screw it. I'm going to put them in the S tier. Why not? <laughs> doesn't matter. It's not really tiers anyway. It's my power rankings. But I'm going to have the New York Giants at number 5. Uh, it's hard to say that they should be any lower than this. I know a lot of people continue to say they don't fully believe in this team. The Giants are for real. Uh, I'm not telling you that they're a Super Bowl team quite yet, but they're for real. They are making the playoffs. This is a good football team. They know what they do best, and they've beaten good teams along the way. I mean, you look at my power rankings. They beat Baltimore, who I have at 7. They beat the Packers, who I have around middle of the pack. They beat the Titans, who I have at 10. So they've beaten some pretty good teams along the way, right? Uh, even Jacksonville, I think, is better than their record. I really do. I think that was a more impressive win than a lot of people give the Giants credit for uh, this past week. So Saquon Barkley continues to run the football. Daniel Jones continues to come up with big plays when the team needs him most. And Wink continues to find ways to get the most out of his defense. The running defense is a big concern for the Giants. I'm not going to lie about that. It's gotten worse and worse every week. That's something that they definitely have to tighten up. But the Giants have been really good in the red zone. That continued. They've been able to bend but not break. Hopefully, they could get a lot more pressure on the quarterback this week. But regardless, Giants up to a 6-1 and start. It's hard not to have them this high. A lot of people might be saying, Chris, what are you doing? How do you have them below the Cowboys? Listen, I got to respect the Cowboys. The Cowboys beat us. And the Cowboys demolished us in the trenches when we played there. We want to pass the Cowboys in my power rankings. Either we got to get a two-game advantage or we got to beat the Cowboys when we play them in Thanksgiving. That's the way I look at it right now. Do I think we're close to the Cowboys? 100%. Do I think we could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Dallas Cowboys? 100%. But I got to respect them. When they played us in our house, they beat us by a touchdown. And really, that game shouldn't have been as close as the final score dictated. Dallas's defense this year, as much as I hate to say it, has been a lot better than I ever thought it would be. Um, you know, last year, I thought their defense was a bit fluky due to the fact that they were able to create as many turnovers as they did. They got a damn good defensive line. Micah Parsons is probably the best defensive player in football. And that running attack is starting to get it going a bit as well. So And they and they have Dak back. So Dallas is good. Dallas is very good. And the NFC East is very good. So I'm going to have them there. And at number three, I'm going to go with the Kansas City Chiefs. I almost went with the Eagles here. I really did because uh, the Chiefs do have two losses. So that's why I had them there. But if I'm being honest, I think the Chiefs are a better team than the Eagles. Eagles are great. Okay. Don't think I'm like hating on the Eagles as a Giants fan. But I mean, Pat Mahomes, come on. Andy Reid. Uh, explosive offense, and the Chiefs haven't missed a beat. I mean, let me pull up their schedule real quick, but Kansas City, you know, a lot of people thought they would, you know, maybe tail off a little bit due to the fact they lost Tyreek Hill. That looks to be a brilliant trade by the Kansas City Chiefs because their team looks like they haven't lost anything, and they got a ton of draft capital uh, by making that trade when they did, and they probably said to themselves, we got Pat Mahomes. He's going to be able to make the most out of whoever we bring in at the wide receiver position. They're paying Mahomes to do that, and he's doing it. Um, <laughs> Mahomes has been absolutely fantastic this year. I think he's got 20 touchdowns, probably the front runner for MVP. And you look at their schedule. I mean, they lost to Buffalo by four, and they did lose to the Colts in Indianapolis by three. Outside of that, they won on the road. They put up 44 against Arizona week one. They beat the Chargers 27-24. They put up 41 against the Bucks. one in Tampa Bay by 10. They put up 30 against the Raiders. They put up 44 this past week against the Niners. They put up over 40 points in three games. They put up over 30 points in four. So they continue to have a high-octane offense and are probably, if we're being honest with ourselves, the second-best team in the NFL. But a, because the Eagles are the lone unbeaten team, it's very hard for me not, as much as I hate them, much like the Cowboys, it's very hard for me not to have them at least at number two. And that's where I'm going to have them. And listen, the Eagles are a really good football team. The Eagles have a really good rushing attack. The Eagles have two really good wide receivers. One of the best wide receiving cores in the National Football League between A.J. Brown and obviously Devontae Smith. And Devontae Smith's been a lot better than I thought he would be this year. They've looked explosive. Jalen Hurts, when given the proper surroundings, has looked like a very, very good football player. And they got tons of talent all over that defense. They got a really good defensive line, really good offensive line. They're strong in the trenches. So that's why I've got the Eagles as high as they, I do. And they're not going to tail up anytime soon because the Eagles play a really soft schedule. Really looking forward, though, to when the New York Giants get to take them on. Uh, I think it's like two two games in a three- or four-week span. So it'll be interesting to see how we stack up against them later in the year. The Eagles, the one thing I will say, have not quite been nearly as good in the second half as they've been the first. They've been a team that really comes out and punches you in the mouth. And then in the second half, it seems like they've tailed off a bit. That's something that they have to clean up because when they start going up against really good teams in the playoffs, 
You can't let that happen. So we'll see. If you're an Eagles fan, you're probably confident they're going to figure that out. But they're off to a great start. I mean, they're the only unbeaten team in football. It's hard not to have them this high. Final team I'm going to have is the Buffalo Bills. Quite simply, they're the best team in football. I don't even think it's that close. Um, and if it is close, it's the Chiefs that are close to them. But the Buffalo Bills are super dominant. Yeah, I understand they have one loss, and I understand the Eagles are undefeated. But the Bills' only loss came to Miami when Miami was playing really well in Miami. Divisional game, it can happen. Most of the time, you're going to lose at least one divisional game. And if you had to pick out one, it was probably that one. In Miami, they lost 21-19. Outside of that, 31-10, they beat the Rams. 41-7, they beat the Titans. Those are two arguably top 10 teams. They demolished them. They beat them by a final score of 72-17 to in the first two weeks. They beat Baltimore on the road 23-20. They beat the Steelers 38-3. to And then they beat Kansas City this past week in Arrowhead 24-20. Josh Allen to me. It's either him or Mahomes for the MVP, but Josh Allen is a freak. He's ridiculous. You guys know if you watch my channel, I'm a big fan of his. I picked the Bills to win the Super Bowl at the beginning of the year, and I'm not changing that pick now because they've looked as impressive as I thought they would. And when you look at their upcoming schedule, they're probably going to destroy Green Bay. They got the Jets, um, and then they got the Minnesota Vikings before they play Cleveland, Detroit, and New England. Uh, I think Buffalo is going to win 14, maybe 15 games this year. Really good football team. No, not a really good football team. They're a great team. So those are my power rankings. Uh, Giants, I got at number five. My top ten, at counting it down, I got the Titans at ten. I got the Jets at nine. I got the Bengals at eight. I got the Ravens at seven. I got the Vikings at six. I got the G-Men at five. Dallas Cowboys at four. Kansas City Chiefs at three. Philadelphia Eagles at two. And the Buffalo Bills at one. If you like this content, let me know in the comments below. I know you guys aren't going to agree with every one of my picks, um, but it's for fun. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And if you enjoy it, I'll do it each and every week. As always, if you like what you watch, please subscribe, drop a comment, maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.